This is Twit. So Windows 10 gets Microsoft closer to this dream of universal apps, apps that work across desktop and mobile and tablet platforms. Um, so joining us to talk a little bit about this and what it means in the eco ecosystem for Microsoft is Devendra Hardawar, Senior Editor at Engadget. Devendra, welcome. Hey guys, thanks for having me. Of course. So how does this notion of universal apps fit into Microsoft's vision? Well, it's uh, it's weird because it's something Microsoft's been talking about for a while, actually, even before the launch of Windows 8. There was this idea that a developer could write a single app and put it on the Windows Store, and then it'll also be available on the Windows Phone Store and maybe other devices, too, like maybe even the Xbox. And it seems like with Windows 10, we're finally seeing that happen. Uh, Microsoft last talked about it at their build conference uh, about a year ago. Um, so that gave developers some time to start building these apps. But... Uh, in yesterday's presentation, we saw a couple examples of how it could work. Uh, they showed the newest version of Office, um, you know, running across a Windows phone, and uh, which I guess the, that brand is dying too. It's all just Windows 10 now, but running across a phone and a PC, and it's it looks like basically the same app. Um, Outlook looked the same. PowerPoint looked the same. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see like how Microsoft uh, kind of leverages this to get more people to build apps for its platforms, because that's been the biggest problem with Windows Phone and Windows 8 so far. Microsoft likes to uh, uh, make things seem simple, but things rarely are simple with Microsoft. They have a kind of conundrum with this vision, uh, which mm -hmm. is that their desktop uh, app applications and the third-party applications that are created for Windows tend to be on the heavy side, I think, uh, compared to a lot of cloud-based and, and lighter apps that are out there. And then, on the other hand, their uh, mobile platforms tend to be low-end in terms of their hardware that they create. They tend to create mm -hmm. <clears throat> mid-range to, to very low-end, inexpensive uh, smartphones, which it, it doesn't seem to me would be able to handle um, bigger, heavier apps that may be more graphics-intensive. How do they intend to uh, deal with the, the fact that Windows applications tend to be huge and mm -hmm. Windows phones that Microsoft makes tend to be weak? I, I figure there's going to be some sort of way to just scale how a device actually runs a particular app. And the thing about you know Windows Phone is that that's Microsoft wasn't always intending to just aim for the low end and the mid range. That's just kind of how things ended up uh, because they were making these phones. Uh, they had the Nokia brand. Um, it was they were able to kind of bring Windows Phone into Europe and other markets where you know not so powerful phones could have actually uh, where they could actually sell those things. Um, I don't think. We're probably going to see different ways of those apps scaling. I don't think we should rule out Microsoft entirely from the high-end phone uh, segment. Like there are still rumors about the Surface Phone um, or other high-end phones. You know, they finalized the Nokia deal last year, um, and I expect a lot of high-end devices to come out too. Um, but yeah, you're right. It'll be interesting to see how the low-end phones handle it. Um, we, honestly, we just haven't seen many details yet. And Devrinder, of course, the big question is how developers are reacting. Um, do you think they're going to get on board and start making things, making apps? I mean, I would hope so. This is kind of a thing. It's it's kind of a drum Microsoft's been beating for a while now. And when it came to Windows 8, they actually went to the point where they were um, kind of buying off developers or at least paying them to start building apps. Um, but I don't think that worked out really well. We just never really saw any very compelling apps for Windows 8. And what were there were honestly just not as good as just like opening a, a website in your browser or something. You know, the, uh, take the Twitter Windows 8 app, for example, which is just kind of hard to use, kind of dull. I'd rather just go to Twitter.com or TweetDeck or something. Um, I think Microsoft has more of a chance to get developers on board now, though, because uh, there's the idea that you could build something on Windows and get it running on your Xbox. For media apps, that could be huge. Um, and, you know, if they finally make the, if they bring Windows 10 to phones in a really interesting way, developers may finally pay attention.